a person like yourself who's a real fan have appreciated Denver all year. You know, maybe the casual fan wasn't paying attention to Denver, but they will now. You should yeah. not have said that. <laughs> now, why is that? Why is that now he's going to run with it like he really know about the Denver Nuggets. I mean, like he's like, he going to say, Joe Dumas said I was a, right. an aficionado of the NBA now. You know? <laughs> well, listen, Joe had it right, and he's back again. And Timmy's here, too. And Jacoby's here. Fan Joe D, a good seeing you, pal. Uh, hey, how are you? How's your family? How's everybody doing? Everybody's great, man. Happy to be here with you guys. Yeah, likewise. Good having you here. Obviously, we're a couple days away from the start of the NBA Finals, Dallas Mavericks, and the Boston Celtics. You know, the first thing I thought of when, you know, they told me that you were going to come on this week is you've experienced what it's like being part of a dynamic duo and a great backcourt. Obviously, you and Isaiah Thomas for all those years in Detroit, and we have that now. You know, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum against Luka and Kyrie. So I guess my first question for you, as a guy who's lived it and been a part of something like that, which of the of – the, and let me just, before I ask you the question, I acknowledge that Joe works for the NBA. He's a vice president and has been with the NBA, so there's no rooting interest. He's not picking the game. But from yeah. a talent standpoint, which of those two duos is a harder matchup, in your opinion? So I think that um... – Obviously, I'm going to say both of them are impossible to, sure. to match. Of course. But, but I will say this, though, is that let, let me say this just about the matchups, what you were saying at first, Craig. What's been interesting to watch is that I think when, when you see matchups get together, I think people think that, oh, well, it's just going to click in, in, in five, six, seven, ten games or whatever, right? And what you've seen over time with both of those matchups is it takes a little bit of time to get on the same page. And I think what you've seen with Luca and Kyrie, it's it's taken them a little over a year or so, a couple of years or whatever, but you, you see those guys really, really clicking together now. And obviously Tatum and Brown, um, uh, the same thing. Luca and Luca and uh, and Kyrie are, are more one-on-one -on -one players. And so those are tough matchups. You know, when you got a guy that can go get it, like he can, like those guys can, those guys are, man, a hard matchup, man, when I'm watching them play. Would you and Isaiah have been fearful of either one of them? Well, fearful is a strong word, Greg. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean good God. Now, I, I, I can answer that. I can answer that. I can answer that. No, they wouldn't. No, they would not. Would well, they give up a little size? Who we'll we'll give up a little size? They would have given up a little size there. Joe, you, Joe Dumars was sticking Magic Johnson. <laughs> Joe Dumars was sticking Michael Jordan. Oh What's that? God. I mean, come on, man. I'm just saying. And, and, and the way the rules was when we played? Much different. Yeah, come on now. Much different. We're not on, getting 81 I, I can take yeah, I can answer that for him. No, yeah, they yeah. would the, not be. The, the answer is no. Joe, listen. No, but I, I would have respected those guys guys though man uh, we, those... we always respect people we always respect yeah, people but, but, but when absolutely. that ball goes up on them them four lines 94 feet that our yeah. respect is gone yes it's yeah. about me against you that's yeah. correct right. so let me ask you a question joe so so yeah. so everybody kind of was on the nba about jamal murray okay uh -huh. and, and, and and um uh mb okay not getting suspended especially this guy here you know, what 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 was the um, thinking behind that? You know, Jamal Murray throwing something at the referee and then it landed on the floor. Somebody could have got hurt. And actually, Embiid uh, with, uh, the with the flake, you know, tripping somebody and grabbing them. And, and actually, Robinson going back to get another uh, operation on that ankle. Yeah, Tim, Timmy, what, what what happens is, man, these plays come in, man, and it's, it's a really small group of people here that get on it the first thing the next morning. And so... In a situation where Murray, where the referee doesn't see it, um, you know, then it, you know it falls on our lap here, and then we have to get together internally here and and make a determination whether or not something is um, egregious enough to suspend the guy. And and I, I do want to say that you know, like, look, man, you don't want to just be throwing guys out of the game. That that's not what you want to do. Um, you know, if, if if somebody slips on that, if, if there's an incident with that on the court, Tim, are we probably looking at it differently? They kicked it right off the court, and so we moved on. We said play on. So okay. you just got to make a judgment on a lot of this stuff, Tim, where where you're thinking, like, if it really, really crosses the line, somebody gets hurt or slip on it, I, I, I think we're having a different conversation. The fact that they just kicked it right off the court, we just decided let's play on.
Talking to Joe Dumars, VP of Basketball Operations for the NBA and, of course, one of the great basketball players of his era. You know, you know Joe, it's funny. I'm just thinking about, you know, how we got to the Dallas Mavericks and, you know, to uh, the Boston Celtics. And it seems like, and this is a good thing, there's been a changing of the guard, especially out west where you have a team like Oklahoma City, a team like Minnesota, and then individuals that come out of that SGA, of course, Anthony Edwards. And it seems like every time we start wondering or worrying as NBA fans, where's the next superstar coming from? You know, LeBron's going to retire. The Warriors run seems to be over. Where's it coming from? A guy always pops up. How do you guys view what's happened out west and the fact that teams like Phoenix with you know, KD and Booker and Beal and the Lakers and the Warriors all got eliminated early this year, but we got uh, you know, fined and we kind of had new guys get introduced to us. So, I, I, Tim and Craig, I, I, I would say this, and you guys, you know, Timmy, you've been in the league a long time, and Craig, you've been following it a long time. I, the, the best thing that can happen is for these things to happen organically. Like, you can't create superstars. You can't, you can't orchestrate it. Like, you can't orchestrate it from the league office or anything. It has to happen on the court. And that's the great thing about what you're talking about, Craig, right now. Like, you you, you can't decide we're going to choose this guy and he's going to be the star and they're going to win. Like, it doesn't work like that in the NBA. You have to get on the court and prove it. And so you can have all the preseason predictions. You can have all the back and forth about who's going to do what. But at the end of the day, man, when they toss that ball up for 48 minutes, you have to prove it, and I think that's what you've seen. You saw Dallas just emerge this year, especially after the trade. You saw them emerge on the court. And so that's what I really like about it, Craig, is that you can't orchestrate it from here in, uh, on Fifth Avenue. It has to happen on the court. Yeah, one other thing that you can orchestrate, I'm sure you guys would have, if you could have, and I've tried to make the point, it's no one's fault. It's just, you know, you couldn't have predicted a sweep or your know, five-game series win is that the NBA kind of loses a little momentum coming off to the Western Conference Finals and the Eastern Conference Finals and having that nine-day layoff. Is there any way moving forward you think we can, quote-unquote, fix that, where if we do have sweeps or short series, we can get the arenas available so that we can start the NBA Finals without losing the momentum that we had? That, that that's an interesting thing because we, we were talking about that here in the office last week and it's just tough Greg uh, two things are tough one is the arena availability and two is television like they slot that 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 time when it's going to start and, and now you're talking about moving around a whole lot of programming and stuff sure. and so I just I just think it's it's tough now we've done it in the past in, in years in the past but I just think it's tough and you know you know there's a chance for a sweep and something like this to happen but you know you just do it and, and and you move on and you know when they toss it up Thursday night you know everybody will forget that you know we've been off for a while you know people be locked into the finals for sure you know one of the great stories uh, this season Joe was uh Wemby and San Antonio not from a team perspective obviously you know they the second I think worst record next to the Detroit Pistons but the kid emerged and I think to be fair Lived up to the billing, not just his rookie of the year and, you know, uh, led the league in blocks and all that. But it seems like everything you guys thought that this kid was, he's been on the court and off the court. Just talk about him for a minute. I think he's, he's first of all, I think he's special. But secondly, he, he's fascinating to watch. Like, like for me, when I watched him this year, I would just lock in and watch this kid. Uh, because what I kept thinking was, man, 19 years old? 19 or 20 years old like like what he's doing on the court at that size is just it's just special man and so he's a fascinating guy to watch uh i think he's must see tv this you know to have a guy seven four who moves and thinks like a guard and and plays like a guard at times um yeah he lived up to it craig and and he's a special special young man good to me yo joe so all this speculation about lebron leaving from the Lakers and mm -hmm. you know he want to become a free agent he want to test the waters and he want to see where he wants to go and see you know where Bronny gonna go uh do you think that LeBron could really leave the Los Angeles Lakers and go somewhere else and play 
him in this official position with me or not. I can't. <laughs> I have no idea, young man. <laughs> young young Timmy Hardaway. I have no idea this position. I don't know what I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Obviously, LeBron, he'll make his decisions, Tim, but I, I have no idea. I have zero idea what's what's happening there. But you know, he he he'll make his decisions. Well, let me ask you this. We often talk about Tim Hardaway and we kind of you know look back on his Hall of Fame of playing career, and I ask him, what would have happened if you had the ball and so-and-so is in your way defensively? And the, the answer is usually, I would have torn him up. Oh, kill him. Kill him. <laughs> so, Joe, yeah. i got to ask you the question. You, uh, you're uh, a great defensive player in your own right. Mm -hmm. It's one-on-one, -on -one, and here mm -hmm. comes Tim Hardaway Sr. What happens? <laughs> He's going he's he's going he's going to cross and I'm going to hope he misses. <laughs> I, I I'm not going to stop him. He's going to cross and I'm going to try to defend him Craig and I hope he misses the shot. That, that's uh, all you can do with Hall of Fame players. I am going to tell you this. We he he we he had he came to one of my camps in um um El Paso. Go ahead. Which is great. Mm. And mm -hmm. uh uh the kids out of the out of the eating eating in the lunchroom. Me and Joe play one on one. You know, okay. uh, it was uh, best of three. Okay. You know? We went at it. We went at <laughs> it. It was real. It was real. <laughs> and he won. Joe D Joe. took you down. Oh, he took me down. He won. But it was close. <laughs> he was a college kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took me down. But, he, I mean, but you know, it, it, it was real. And you, and you could tell uh, the physicality, how he played defense, how he moved his hands, how he moved his feet, and you understood mm -hmm. why he was one of the best defensive guards in the NBA. Sure, I know I and, and another thing, yeah, and, and his offense is underrated. Mm -hmm. I got to let you go in a second, Joe. I just said one question. Of all the crazy things I've said on this show, the thing mm -hmm. that I get the most hate for, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's every time I say it, People just attack me and attack and attack and attack, but I want your take on it. As a guy who both played and has now you know, seen basketball from the business side of it as well, I've made the argument that Kyrie Irving is one of the five best guards, just natural ability to ever play the sport of basketball. And I'm not, I don't start ranking them with you, but when you take a look at what Kyrie brings to the table and you eliminate everything non-basketball, because that's right. been the bugaboo about him, obviously, right. the off-the-court stuff. As a mm -hmm. pure basketball player, would you mm -hmm. agree that Kyrie Irving is one of the greatest to ever play? One of the most skilled basketball players of all time. Yep. That, it, it's not even an argument, Craig. He's he's one of the most skilled basketball players that we've ever seen. So I, I, I would agree with you, Craig. Mm -hmm. I, I, the skill that he has on the court is is I mean, you just don't see that you know Timmy I, I'm sure Timmy would say the yes. same thing yes yeah. you just don't it's, see it's that kind of, and if you yeah. see him and if you see him up in close in person or they at the arena it's crazy he, has, yeah. he, he amazes you yeah now yeah. I know I gotta let you go I wish you guys the best of luck starting Thursday night of course the NBA Finals Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics Timmy's gonna be at every single game because yeah, of him, course yeah. his son uh, plays for the Mavericks Hopefully Absolutely. he'll get into a couple games yes. in the finals. Absolutely. Your seats will be a couple rows in front of Timmy's. So no, I don't know where it, Timmy's in, but I'll see for me there. Yeah. Right, you'll see me there. If you feel, I, 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 in Dallas, I'll be on wood. All right, okay. All right. I, like I was going to say, if, like you feel, if you feel a hand touch you on the shoulder, you ain't got to turn around. It's all, it's all okay. no, he, he know my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, always good talking Thanks, to you, Joe. Joe. Be a stranger. Nice. And good all luck right. starting Thursday, pal. Appreciate you. Right, yep. There you go. The great Joe Dumars, who for a while now has been v vice president of a basketball operations and, of course, a great piston yep. and, a, and, a, and a champion as well. Hall of Famer. So always, and a Hall of Famer. Yep. Always good having Joe Dumars uh, stop by. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.